Good morning and welcome to Saturday the 18th of April. And since this is Saturday, um, and I would assume that most people are at home, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Rather than reading every single scripture for you today, I'm going to give you the scripture reference and I'm going to let you look up those scriptures yourself. So I will tell you basically what I'm saying, and you'll need to open the Bible and read the whole verse yourself. So there's my devotion. There's a blank piece of, bit of paper on the back. And so find yourself paper, pen, and when you're ready to go, restart this video, and then write the verses down and take some time to look at each one of them. That's your homework for today. So here are several questions that people have brought to me through the years. And I'm going to give you the scripture references and you can work your way through, study them and pray about them and become the disciple that Jesus wants you to be. Are mercy and grace the same? The answer is no, but they are related. So what's the difference between them? Well, mercy is a heart that is touched by the sufferings of others. It's sympathy for the hurting. What is grace? Grace is favor or blessing or benefit done for someone who is undeserving of it. Question number two. Are mercy and forgiveness the same? No, they're not but they are related. So what is the difference between them? Forgiveness is the act of pardoning an offender. In the Bible, the Greek word translated forgiveness literally means to let something go. As when a person does not demand payment for a debt. So let me give you a little illustration. Somebody backs into your car in the parking lot and you run outside and you're all upset and the person is there and they're feeling so terrible about it but they say to you I'm sorry I don't have money to give to you to help fix your dented fender forgiveness would say okay I forgive you and I'll pay for the dented fender that's pretty much what forgiveness is and that's what Jesus meant when he uses the word in Luke eleven four, forgive us our debts as we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. Go ahead and read that. Likewise, in the parable of the servant who has been forgiven much, Jesus equated forgiveness with canceling a debt. That parable is found in Matthew chapter 18, verses 23 through 35. And again, write those down and read them later. Okay? We forgive others when we let go of resentment and give up any claim to be compensated for the hurt or the loss that we've suffered. The Bible teaches us that love is the basis for true forgiveness because Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 13, you'll find love does not keep an account of wrongs suffered. So that brings us then to the point of, I can hear it in the background, it doesn't seem fair. And actually, grace in that sense is not fairness. Because if we were ultimately asking God to be fair with us, then our sins would never be forgiven. And that isn't what I want. So since I want my sins forgiven, then in fairness, I have to forgive other people what they've done to me. So that has the contrasting question then. Well, if forgiveness means releasing somebody from the debt that they owe or what they've done wrong, then here are some thoughts about what forgiveness is not. Forgiveness does not condone the offense. 
it never says that, oh, what you did wasn't wrong. It recognizes that if forgiveness is necessary, then there has been a wrong that's been committed. The Bible condemns people who say that their actions are harmless or acceptable or that good is evil or evil is not wrong. Isaiah 520, you look that up. Secondly, forgiveness doesn't take away any consequences of what may happen because of a person's behavior. So, in other words, forgiveness doesn't pretend that the sin never happened. When God forgave King David of his sins of adultery with Bathsheba and basically what was murder of Uriah, a servant of his, God did forgive David, but he didn't shield him from the consequences of his sin. Read 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 9 through 13. Next, forgiveness does not mean that it's okay for people to take advantage of you. Suppose, for example, that you've loaned money to someone and they waste that money and then they come one day and they tell you that they can't repay you the money that they owe you. So they tell you that they're sorry and they apologize. And you decide that you're going to choose to forgive them. You're not going to harbor resentment. You're not going to keep bringing the issue back up over and over again. You'll cancel the debt. But you can't choose not to lend them money anymore. Psalm 37, verse 21, Proverbs 14, verse 15, and chapter 22, verse 3, Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. So what happens then if you're the victim of something that's been really cruel or someone who refuses to apologize or even admit that what they've done is wrong? The Bible advises you this way. Let go of anger and abandon rage. That's Psalm 37, verse 8. So you don't excuse what they did, nor do you tell yourself that the hurt that you've suffered isn't real, because it is. Instead, you refuse to let anger control you. Don't be consumed with what happened. Trust that God will bring the person to account. If you look back at yesterday's teaching, Jesus said, judge not that you won't be judged. And that means ultimately we are not judge, jury, executioner. God is. Leave those things in his hands. Hebrews 10, verses 30 and 31. You can also take comfort in the truth that God will bring a time of full and complete healing to your heart. The Bible says that he will wipe away every tear. Isaiah 65, verse 17, Revelation 21, verse 4. So that means to forgive and leave in the hands of God. Last of all, recognize that maybe what you think is an offense committed against you, really wasn't that in the first place. So we need to remember that maybe we've got no valid reason for being offended in the first place. The Bible teaches us, don't be quick to take offense, for the taking of offense is the mark of a fool. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 9. In all things, remember that God extends forgiveness. That means he cancels debt. God is merciful. That means he is moved by our sufferings. And God is gracious. That means he treats us in ways we don't deserve. When we start imitating God in those ways, by forgiving, by being merciful, and by treating others in ways that they don't deserve, they haven't earned, we become exactly what God wants us to be, which is Christ-like. And that, my friends, is the goal 
of why you're here in the first place, to become just like him so that you can live with him forever. And isn't that a great goal? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for these lessons today. Help us become just like Jesus. It is a lifetime goal that isn't easy, but we choose to do it because Christ has said to us, follow me. So we do that today in his name. As always, God bless you. And this is Pastor Greg, and together we are remaining in his grip.